We hold in unity that at our very core, at our very essence, we are spiritual and we are divine. Now, I know you've heard those words before, but I want to challenge you in the same way I'm going to challenge myself to take them deeper than you've ever taken them before. To not just let them reside in your mind that, you know, yes, yes, I know that I've read that, yeah, I've thought about that. But to let them really take root inside your very being so that they influence the choices that you make and the way that you act on a day-to-day -day basis. That we are divine, that we are spiritual, that we really are. We really are made in the image and after the likeness of God. It does not mean that we don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean that sometimes we act really obnoxiously. It doesn't mean that sometimes we're not hurtful. But that's a cover-up, actually. It isn't describing what we are. The very best illustration that I know to get at what we are versus who we are is a story, a true story, about the Golden Buddha of Thailand. Some of you may have heard this story. Raise your hand if you know about the Golden, Golden Buddha of Thailand. And some of you, but not all of you, I'm going to tell you. It's a true story. There is a temple in Thailand called the Temple of the Golden Buddha. And the Golden Buddha is about 10 and a half feet tall, solid gold, weighing over two and a half tons, quite some time ago. It was valued at $196 million, and that's way before the price of gold is done with the price of gold is done. So who knows? It's one of those invaluable objects. In 1957, there were a group of monks that had to move this clay Buddha because a highway was going to be put in right in the middle of where their little monastery was. And so this clay Buddha needed to be moved to a new location, and they got the right kind of equipment to pick this big, heavy thing up and, and transport it. it. Took most of the day, and toward the end of the day, as the job was, was done, one of the main monks went out to double check and make sure that the Buddha, the clay Buddha, was all right. It also happened that that evening, rain was starting to fall, and as the monk was looking at the clay Buddha, he noticed that there was a crack in it. And he was concerned about that, and he got up to it more closely with a flashlight, and he could see that beneath the crack there was something very bright being reflected off the light of his flashlight. And as he looked even more closely, he realized that the Buddha really wasn't made of clay, that the clay was actually covering something. And so in the middle of the night, he's at work chipping away at this clay, and then finds himself standing in awe of this solid gold Buddha. How did it come to be that way? Historians believe that what had happened was hundreds of years earlier, that golden Buddha was being preserved by some monks who were being invaded by a Burmese army. And somehow those monks got word ahead of time that the Burmese army was coming in and they wanted to protect this beautiful sacred treasure. And so they covered it with mud. And they let that mud dry. The Burmese army, the historians believe, then slaughtered everybody. And it was not until that day in 1957 when they needed to move what everyone thought was a clay Buddha that they discovered that it wasn't clay at all that it was solid gold. I know of no better description of what is true of you and me than that. And it's not just true of you and me, it's true of every single person on this planet. That at the very core, our very nature is as pure as that solid gold Buddha. The difference is, most of us will have quite a bit of clay on. Maybe all of us have clay on. To varying degrees and varying thicknesses, but clay nonetheless. When we think about it, so much of our spiritual journey and any journey we do in therapy or counseling or recovery really is about chipping away at that clay, is it not? 